everyone, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, I'm Sue of Bend and Stretch with Sue. In today's video, I'll be taking you through a standing Pilates practice, one which will target primarily the legs and the glutes. So as we prepare to get started, we'll begin on the floor, the mat, in a cross-legged position. I always like to begin with this to move up the standing to really awaken the core so that as you bring your heels nice and close to the body and sitting in that cross-legged position, you bring the hands to opposite elbows and kind of creating genie arms, then moving your body weight into the outer blades of the feet as you pick up your bottom and press up to come into standing. As we stand with the feet just underneath the hips to begin, we'll just warm up the torso by inhaling the arms up, exhaling the arms back down again. So a couple of repetitions just like this, breathing in fully and breathing out through the mouth. So as you continue with this up and down position or a movement of the arm, you want to be very aware of the position of your body. This is where we want to recruit those core muscles that support us in our Pilates practice and also build and develop strong muscles. Now what you want to do is engage the powerhouse muscles, which are from the belly button down to the pelvic floor. And what you want to maintain is a neutral spinal alignment. So you want to make sure that you're not tilting the pelvis in such a way that you throw your bottom back or tilting so much that you're creating too much flattening in the back. So too much this way will create too much of an um, curve in your lower back. So you want to be neutral in the center where you recruit those core muscles, lifting from the pelvic floor and drawing of the abdominal muscles in toward the sacrum and this, all the muscles that wrap around toward the abdominal. So you're creating a girdle of muscles. So you want to maintain that position the entire time through the practice. So as we begin to incorporate some movement, you can take the hands to the hips here and we'll draw the heels in toward each other to come into some releve. So imagine that you have the inner legs velcroed together as best as you can you're going to try to zip up those legs and maintain them here, keeping your posture nice and stable. From here, you can float the arms up as if you were hugging a tree, pressing those heels into each other, lifting up onto the balls of the feet. Do not let your heels separate and lower back down. So you're going to move up and move down, keeping the body moving up and down, just like an elevator rather than an escalator. So you're moving straight up and down, not moving forward and back for this. So keep your breath flowing, keep squeezing nice and strong through the midlines of those legs. And we'll do a couple more repetitions, trying to get a little bit more height on the balls of those feet, keeping the shoulder blades hugging down your back rib cage. And as we lift up this time, stay up, keep those heels connected, zip up those legs, zip up that core, and let's pulse for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and release it down. So from here, you can shake out the legs a little bit. And as you bring your feet in line with your hips, toes pointed straight ahead, with the hands to the hips again, we're going to turn the left toes in. And if I was mirroring you, this would be your right foot. And you're going to keep the toes pointed inward as we lift the leg out to the side. So we're simply going to remain nice and tall. Now, if you needed a wall to hang on to here, if your balance isn't really sturdy enough that you can remain here for an extended period of time, you can simply hold on to that wall or even have a chair beside you. Quite often these bar um, classes or exercises are really a standing Pilates exercise or a combination of Pilates and dance. So you want to feel 
mindful of recruiting those muscles as you execute the movement. You're never flopping the leg up and down. You are controlling the movement up and controlling the movement down. Now, as you bring the foot out in front of you, and you can pull those toes towards you, continue to keep the ankle flexed as you reach it across and back. So continue. And if you find it easier to maintain your balance, with the arms out to the sides or again holding on to that wall or to a chair go ahead but you're going to feel the midline of that left leg or right leg the moving leg really working as that standing leg is also working really really hard to stabilize you so keep the breath flowing and we'll move through another three repetitions here another two and one more and bring it back in. So take a moment to breathe deeply, reconnect with that anchoring that you have through your powerhouse and let's come in to doing the other side. So once again, you are going to stabilize and turn the toes of your moving leg inward and reaching out to the side. So you're not necessarily going very high, but you are going to feel the resistance. You want to feel the work here in that outer hip, the outer leg, as you stay strong and pulled in. Breathe in and breathe out. You rule a thumb in Pilates as you're breathing in when it's easy and you're breathing out when it's hard. Now you could pause and take the foot to the floor if you wanted each time you bring the leg in or just graze the floor so it's never touching and that standing leg is always working really, really hard to keep you stabilized. So a few more here. Last two, last one, and bring it in front. Again, you can rest it on the floor or just keep it hovering as you bring it across. So squeeze, feel the midline. So the adductors here in the inner thigh are working to strengthen those muscles, which really are key in stabilizing your hips. So you need the strength in both, and you do need to balance that strength between the outer leg and the inner leg. So really important. So again, if you need your arms, you're struggling with balance, you're going to use whatever you need to, to help you to concentrate on the movement rather than continuing to really struggle with the balance. So last three, last two, last one and bring it in and step it tall so let's take a little bit of loosening to the hips here as we circle them out in both directions a few times and we're going to keep going applying that pressure through those legs and keeping your core stabilized so we're going to move into some squats chair squats as we keep the toes pointed straight ahead keeping the feet underneath the hips so that way your hips um, don't create, you don't create additional strain through the hips by having the feet aligned with them. So as you take a breath in, you're going to reach up forward and sink those hips down. Now notice the position of my knees in proportion to my toes. So you wanna send the hips back. Take a breath in when it's easy, breathe out when it is more difficult. So continuing to move up and down like this. So be very mindful. Each time you might even be able to sneak your hips down a little bit lower, but if you do, do pay attention to the angle of your upper body, your torso. So you wanna try to keep your torso at the same angle as your shins. What I mean by that is you're not bringing your chest down over the legs, but rather staying lifted through the chest so that you really have to fire those glutes in order to get yourself to strengthen those gluteal muscles. They are, without a doubt, the largest muscles in our bodies because they do so much. They help to stabilize us when we're walking, when we're running, going upstairs. They give us the power that we need to execute those exercises. So it's really important for us to develop them. Otherwise, our hips get out of balance. 
our hips start to take on a lot of that load that these large muscles are supposed to take on. So let's do a couple more. See if you can sneak your hips down a little bit lower. And the next time that you come down, you're going to hold it there as low as you can. Again, pay attention to the position of your torso and let's add our pulses. Your weight is really heavy in your heels. So pulses are smooth. That is one, two, three, four, five, they are not bounces, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and bring it up. Ah, so once again, shake out the legs a little bit, just long enough to think about it. And from here, we'll take the feet wider and come into wide squat. So as you bring your feet outside of your hips, bring them nice and wide, do remain tall, and as you bend your knees, try to have the feet wide enough apart here so that your knees are not coming in front of your ankles. So you don't wanna be in this sort of squatting position. It's really hard on the knees. So you wanna open them up wider. Keeping the alignment of toes and knees is going to also make it easier on those joints. And as you stand nice and tall, if you wanna help with your balance, Arms as if you are hugging a tree will be very helpful. Breathing in and breathing out. Now press the knees open when you come down and lift back up again. So we're moving up and we're moving down, continuing to really feel yourself squeezing those glutes to help you to come back up again. Squeeze at the top, squeeze as you come down, press the knees open so that you're loading up those quadricep muscles to really develop some muscle definition and strength in those upper legs. So continuing to move up and down, just like that elevator. <sighs> Breathing out through your mouth is going to help you to relax your jaw. So we'll do a few more, just like that. And then once again, we're going to hold it this time when we come to the bottom. So try to get your bottom in line with your knees or close to it, as close as you can. Press those knees open. Let's add our pulses for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And come on up. Walk the feet back in again, give those legs a little bit of a shake. So from here, let's move back to our squat. Find your grounded, solid position. Make sure your feet are wide enough so that you're not going to put pressure on the knees and come on back to your squat. This time we're going to lift the right foot up and down. Lift and lower for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, keep your body centered, nine, and ten. Take a break if you need it, otherwise we're coming on to the other side for ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and hold it here. Lift the right foot, lift the left heel, both heels lifted, hold it here, hold it. Let's add our pulses for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bring the heels down and come on up. Whew, bring those legs back in again. Shake them out a little bit. So moving on with that practice. So we want to keep that load in the legs. So from here, we are going to ground through the right foot as we step back with the left foot. So once again, you want to make it a nice big step here as you maintain an up and down position with your body. Breathing in at the top, breathe out as you come down and up. So when you come down, that bottom knee is making its way toward your mat, moving your body strong and straight, just like an elevator. So pressing through the ball of that back foot, pressing through the heel and the ball of your front foot to help to ground you. So moving up and down a few more times here, breathing smoothly. 
and let's hold it down, hold it. Add your pulses for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and step that foot in. Whew. Let's move right into the other side, taking the, left, the right foot back this time. So once again, both hips, shoulders, everything is squared in a line. That back foot is far enough for you to get up on the ball of that foot as you bend and straighten. Bend and straighten. So you're going to feel with all of these exercises that typically one side is easier than the other. The other one more challenging. So do give yourself some forgiveness for that, but do your best as you continue to focus on bringing the balance to the two sides of your body. So keep breathing, moving up and down, making it smooth as you're going up and down. So it is a very silky kind of movement. The next time we come down, we're going to stay here, hold it, that bend in the back knee to pulse for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and step it in. Shake it out a little bit. Let's finish up with a little bit of balancing as I'll move sideways here so you can get a better look and I've got a little bit more room this way as well. So as you stand tall on your mat, grounding on your left leg as we pick up the right knee, you're going to bring that knee in front of you and you are going to reach back, taking that foot, that knee back in again, bringing it in front, inhale and exhale as you wobble a little bit perhaps. You may want to bring your arms out of your sides here to help with your balance. Now that foot can either touch the floor when it comes through that center position, or you could see if maybe you're okay to keep it picked up the entire time, really maximizing the load and the challenge of your balance. So this not only loads up your standing leg, but your core is on here. It's working the entire time that you are gliding through, whoa, through that exercise. So let's do a couple more on this side. Breathe, make sure you're not holding your breath because that is going to make it extra difficult. Let's do one last one. And as we bring it back in, let's step that foot underneath the hip. Get ready to do the other side. So breathe in. And let's get ready. Inhaling and exhale. Reach it through to the back. Whew, I was hoping this side would be easier. Not necessarily the case, but this is a good place to use that wall if you need it and really concentrating. But you will get bonus here if you are going to rely solely on your own balance. So you might want to work up toward that. So you might start off doing this exercise with holding on to something to stabilize you and really concentrate on creating some muscle memory within the body. But eventually, you might find that you're those neural pathways, that proprioception within the limbs, the legs, the feet, gets developed and really works with the brain to help you to stabilize. So we're down to the last two again. One more from here. And step it in. Shake out the legs, shake out the arms. Give yourself a little bit of a sway here as you loosen up through that torso, which worked so hard to stabilize you through that. From here, let's take a nice big stretch. You can bring the arms up, look up to the hands, and exhale, dive down into a forward fold. Let yourself create lots of softness. You can bend your knees if you like, just so that you've got more ease into stretching the torso again. You can add that little bit of a sway from side to side here. Great stretch 
for the hamstrings. Slowly unroll yourself and come all the way up to standing. From here, we'll take a big step forward. You can bring the hands to the floor, bring that back knee down. Let's give the quads a good stretch on that right side. As you reach for your foot, perhaps, you're able to grab a hold of it or not, just reaching in that direction. We just want to stretch through that thigh, sinking the hips, and let's switch it up to the other side. So again, hips nice and heavy to create more of a stretch through the hip flexor. And again, as you pick up the foot, perhaps you're reaching for it, pulling it towards you, or just reaching and intending in that direction. As you release it, come on to a seated position once again. You can bring the soles of the feet together, stretching those inner thighs, which worked quite hard today as well. You can bring the hands, wrap them around your toes, press the knees down with intention, or maybe slide those elbows on top to give yourself a little bit more of a stretch. And bring the knees in, give yourself a big hug here. Bring the forehead to the knees. And as we bring our practice to a close, I want to thank you so much for your time today. I hope you enjoyed that little practice for the legs. Be sure to do it often. And as if you have any questions, comments, by all means, place them below. I'll be happy to answer them for you. And be sure to give me one of these if you liked it. Hit that subscribe button with the notification bell so that you'll know when I upload new content. Share it with your friends and check it out and check me out in the next video. Namaste. Thank you.